program. This is our first series of breakout sessions, so I just want to welcome you all to this breakout session with Hilaria Sapi. She is from UI Health, and she's today going to be talking about muscle therapy program for dialysis patients. Uh, before she begins, I want to just tell you a little bit more about her. Um, so Hilaria graduated in physical therapy in Italy before moving to the United States. Uh, here, Hilaria started working research first as a therapist for the G and Fit Lab and then as a research coordinator for the University of Illinois at Chicago, which I also attended as an undergrad. <laughs> uh, um, currently, Alaria coordinates all the GH studies at UIC, including the study for dialysis patients. So oh, please wow. join me in welcoming Alaria Sapi. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. So today I would like to talk to you about the importance of staying active while on dialysis and to um, maintain a, a muscle function while on dialysis, but also after a kidney transplant. So um, as we all know, aging is a physiological process, right? but can also be associated with physical impairment and sometimes even with disability. As you can see from this sectional image, with time, we tend to lose muscle mass. Consequentially, we lose strength. That can lead to possible disability and chronic conditions. So for example, even chronic kidney disease. Uh, we know that about 20% of chronic kidney disease population is considered frail. Now, we have um, a scientific method to assess the frailty syndrome with some tests. Um, and we learned that frailty is also considered a risk factor for mortality after a kidney transplant. So as you can see, let's look at the five years post-transplant percentage mortality. You can see how it increased uh, a lot in the frail population versus not frail populations. Um, this is why um, we decided to open a study at UIC um, to study the effect of a specific muscle therapy called GH from the creator of the method, Greg Ahai. And um, there, this, this rehabilitation program is designed to create, obviously, physical changes in our patients. So we um, work on reducing symptoms such as pain, fatigue, low energy levels, muscle weakness, muscle crampings, but also to improve our patients' motivation and mindset. I will show you now a video. You will probably recognize some of the testimonials in this video. They will talk about how this specific muscle therapy changed their life. Since I retired 20 some years ago, I've been searching for something to replace that, that effort, that workout of, of football. This workout has revolutionized the way I think about my body and moving forward. The excitement that I feel every time I come into GA Fit Lab, it's been outstanding because it's not only the concept, it's the belief, it's, it's that focus and that focus that the intensity you know, which we use in football. But for so long, we were taught about explosive exercise, lifting as much weight as we could, and doing damage in the meantime to the muscles, not repairing the muscles. And that's the whole idea of what we do here, is we're actually rebuilding the muscles slowly, but you're also repairing them. It does literally pump the blood through your system and makes your body start to repair and, and heal, and you can feel that. And it took a couple weeks, I think, Around it, and then all of a sudden the pain goes away. I've not seen any 
by doing this type of work. It's helped me uh, with my boss because it gives me flexibility and gives me strength. And that's what you need for golf. And the whole idea of uh, someone asked me, coaching you through it, with a clear understanding of who you're trying to go and what you're trying to do, uh, and, and what ails, more importantly, how to get that better. Uh, you know, not any problems are you solved here, but I tell you one thing, a lot of them can be helped here. And my muscle has become medicine for my body. I understand about connecting my muscles. I understand about when I, uh, when I work out one muscle and getting that muscle to its maximum potential. I wish I would have had you 25 years ago. And if I had it 25 years ago, I'd be in better shape than I am today, and I'm not in bad shape today. What we've been trying to do here at the GHA Lab has worked for me. The feeling of return to my shins and my, my ankles and my feet, uh, the shoulder is, uh, is, it's been magnificent. My pain level's gone way down and when I do the exercises now. And it's more weight, so I mean, stronger but less pain, which is the whole idea. To be able to play golf, to be able to play baseball again, Check six or seven innings and feel healthy. I feel happy to get up and, and my body doesn't ache. I'm feeling refreshed. I'm feeling strong and I can feel my body regenerating and that's an awesome feeling. I want to take it all the way out to the end, whatever the end is. I want to be in the best shape I can be in because I think that will let me have a better quality of life. I can place the time now because I've got three grandchildren and I want to be sure that I'm around for them too. So I can enjoy them. They might not necessarily enjoy me, but I want to be around and enjoy them. It's been a lifesaver. It's been great. And I'm thankful for it. If you're an ex athlete or, or uh, even anybody, you, and, and, and you want to get your, I think your body in the best shape you can get in, you, you got to try this program. So we brought this program to UIC and here you can kind of see how the program is structured. So when we have a patient coming to us enrolled in one of our studies, the first phase we go through is an educational phase and assessment. So we explain why it's important for them to be in the program and we explain obviously why it's crucial for them to stay active. Then we do an assessment on their body, so a physical assessment with some tests, and we slowly begin with the muscle activation, so with muscle contractions. After the first phase, we start building strength, so muscular strength. To do that, every time the patient comes, we progressively increase the weight that they will lift, and we will decrease gradually the amount of repetitions that they do. After the second phase, the strength phase, we move to the endurance phase. So now we wanna build endurance in the muscle. To do that, we have to start decreasing the weights every time the patient comes and increasing the amount of repetitions. And that's how we work on the muscle for the duration of the study. In this case, on post-kidney transplant is 12 months. So this is kind of how the first study that we opened at UIC was structured. So we had 144 patients enrolled. Randomization one was one, two to one. So two in the exercise group, one in the control. Exercise group means that these patients were treated with this GH muscle therapy for 12 months, twice a week, about an hour every session. The control group didn't receive any intervention. Out of those 102 patients in the exercise group, 59 dropped, mostly because of logistics reason. We have to do our therapy sessions at UIC. So for some of them, it was very hard to um, come to therapy on days, um, you know, two days a week for an hour. It's, it's a commitment. Uh, but 85 of those completed the program. So the purpose of this study was to look at um, out outcomes of 41 patients of those 85 in the exercise group. Um, particularly, we wanted to see 
how this muscle therapy had an effect on their ability to keep their job or find a job. So going back to work or even returning to school. Because we know that these are two of the most important metric of well-being in our society. So we had 41, we considered 41 participants in the exercise group and 25 of the control one. Both groups underwent testing um, at baseline, so when they started the program, after six months and at 12 months. At each time point, they were assessed for employment and school status. This is referred to the exercise group. So this is their exercise capacity. So the total amount of weight they were able to move per session, and you can kind of see how that increased in 12 months. So obviously their strength increased. We also have a scientific way to measure the strength. And here you can kind of see there's a um, statistically significant change if we compare the control group to the exercise. You can see in red how the exercise group strength improved a lot. Um, unfortunately, the control group actually, the strength decreased. The lean mass, so we measure the lean mass with um, a body scan called a DEXA scan. And even if you cannot really see a huge change for the exercise group, unfortunately, there's a um, statistically significant decrease in the lean mass, so in the muscle mass, for the control group. That means that even with a functioning kidney, the population in the control group, unfortunately, was getting weaker. The bone mineral content is also assessed with a body scan, and that's mostly referred to the calcium and phosphorus in our bones. We know that low bone mineral contact is a risk factor for de developing spontaneous fracture and osteoporosis, so it's important to um, have a higher bone mineral content. You can clearly see that the exercise group is able to show greater increase in their bone mineral content from the baseline to the 12 months. This is the level of pain interfering with their daily activities assessed with a questionnaire. You can kind of see that for the control group in red, um, it didn't change, actually increased a little bit, dramatically decreased for the exercise group. Mental health was also assessed with a questionnaire and there's a significant change for the exercise group. So the mental health also improved a lot. Now going back to the main questions about employment. Uh, for our exercise group, out of those 41 patients, um, at the beginning of the program, 20 were unemployed, 7 were retired, and 14 were either employed or in school. By the end of the program, of those 20 patients unemployed, 15 were able to go back to work. So that's a 75% increase. And out of those 14 employed, well, 10 were able to keep their job, 2 went from part to full time, one lost the job but went back to school, and one went from part-time to full-time school. This is the outcome in the control group. So out of the uh, 25 patients, 14 were unemployed at the beginning and 11 employed. Only two, by the end of the 12 months, uh, found a job. So that's only a 14% increase. And whoever was employed kept their job. Um, I will show you now a video of one of the patients that was enrolled in this study, in the kidney study. Okay, I'm not sure why the audio. Severe numbness and weakness in his legs and feet. In addition to his neuropathy, Ron had chronic knee pain, and at the young age of 39, 
was unable to walk without his braces and machine. He was overweight, exhausted, and sleeping on average 14 hours a day. Despite being a hard worker all his life, Ron lost his job while on dialysis, and he had to rely on disability support for eight years with no hope for a better life. Ron also had a few setbacks in the program. Over the course of the year, he was hospitalized for fluid retention and infections. Yet despite all that, he continued to follow the GH study protocol and showed great improvement. I have noticed my energy increasing a little bit more, you know, week after week. I've started noticing my legs starting to get stronger, pretty much walking without the pain now. It had been 11 months into the program, and Ron has gone through an amazing transformation. His focus and commitment is inspiring to all of us. He also has some great news to share. 11 months into the study, I was able to gain employment as a bus driver. As a bus driver, uh, transport students to school safely. And now it feels, it feels wonderful to be working uh, at this point in time. After eight years of not working, I feel great, you know, greater than I ever have. I never thought in a million years that I would be sitting here to tell you this, but, you know, basically, uh, all things are possible. So, thrilled by the results of this study, we decided to open a study for dialysis patients. Now, we know that there is a mm, syndrome called protein energy wasting syndrome that is one of the most serious complications for patients with chronic kidney disease. So people basically uh, on dialysis, they tend to lose muscle mass, lean mass. We know that muscle is uh, protective for cardiovascular events. So it's very important to keep a certain level of activity while being on dialysis, even if it's hard. Um, to kind of try to prevent as much as possible those cardiovascular events. So we opened a pilot study in 2018. We opened this study for 10 patients. So we enrolled 10 patients on hemodialysis. They were enrolled in the program for six months, coming to UIC for muscle therapy sessions twice a week, about an hour each. And they were, they went, um, uh, underwent testing at baseline, so at the beginning of the program, after three months and at six months. And they were assessed for a lot of things, physical function, pain, energy, general health, depression, at each time point. So these are the results. You can kind of see how their physical function changed radically, rapidly, even in only three months. Um, their physical ability was assessed. Now, I um, assess their physical ability asking them to perform three tests. One is the sit to stand. So I asked the patient to stand up and sit down from a chair as many times as possible without using their arms. Then I measured the time it takes them to um, walk for eight feet. So it's called an eight foot walk test. And then I ask them to keep three positions. So this is a balance test to keep three positions for 10 seconds each. You can kind of see how this, uh, their physical ability change in only six months. Pain dramatically decreased even in the first three months. Their energy improved a lot. You can kind of see there's a rapid increment between the baseline and the three months. And then it stays all the way through the end of the program. Their general health assessed with a questionnaire improved significantly. Their depression uh, assessed again with a self-reported questionnaire decreased. So thrilled by the results we had in only six months, we decided it was time to open a bigger study for dialysis patients. And we are actively recruiting 
Um, it's now a randomized case control trial. So we have the same structure as I explained to you before for the kidney study. We have two groups now, exercise and control. Dialysis patients are coming, who are enrolled in the exercise group are coming to us on days when they are not on dialysis and they, um, they come for uh, therapy sessions an hour every time, one-on-one -on -one with a therapist um, for 12 months. So now we extended the pilot study. They obviously get tested at baseline six months and 12 months. Same for the control group, but obviously the control group doesn't get any therapy, no interventions. We don't have results yet because we are actively recruiting. The study is open. We have enrolled about 45, 47 patients so far. So we will keep going. Um, and if any of you is interested in knowing a little bit more about the enrollment, I will be happy to uh, talk to you after. I would like to finish the presentation with um, the testimony of uh, a patient that was enrolled in the pilot study, in the dialysis study. Kidney failure has taken my left eyesight. In 2014, I had a cerebral vascular accident, which is a stroke. I had a stroke. I now have poor use of my left leg, so I have to, I'm, I'm tied to a walker now, and it got to a point I can't hardly walk anymore. I have to now sit in my walker and then use like a wheelchair 90% of the time. Well, when you've been on dialysis for nine years, and every time you wake up, you feel something else is breaking down in your body. For example, the eyesight, and then the stroke, and then this happens. That happens, no matter what the case is. You feel that you're dying physically and mentally. I look back on it now and I see that I'm not even the same person I was six months ago. I'm supposed to walk on two feet with my cane. As before, just I was running a while in a walker. And now that I have any pain in my leg, no pain in my ankles or feet, or pain in my, my thighs, no pain whatsoever, it's been a miracle. Go out and make the gun machines, they will do different uh, types of uh, exercises now that I haven't been able to do before. Even be able to stand up and sit down, some of sit down most of the time is, is a shocking. And I enjoyed it, you know. I felt I had so much more energy. I felt so much more excited. Like, this is so good, you know. I can, I can do this, you know. But no, it was, it was very, it was very exciting to see my body do this. I wouldn't ever do this before. It was just standing on my own. My mental state is so much more, so much more healthier now than in my past. I'm not sad, I don't feel like it was doom and doom. What was me feeling? I care about myself now. I care about others around me. You know, I love life. You know, I, I want to sell the flowers. I want to see this thing. You know, I can't wait to take my kids to Disney World now and have fun with them without, hopefully one day without being on Dallas without just checking to see. You know, but at least I got super movement now so I can take them to different places now. I feel that my life is, it's taken off. I was getting healthier. My body was responding to the, the muscle therapy. I was able to walk. Um, my numbers were looking good. Now there is light at the end of the tunnel. I'm on the transplant list now. And any day now, in fact, I can be sitting here right now while I'm doing this interview, I get a call. Hey, come on over there and get your kids. <laughs> okay, any questions for me? So you talk to me, <laughs> I do the enrollment, 
<clears throat> so um, I will explain a little bit how the program works in a little bit more detailed way. All the testing that you will have to go through, um, as I mentioned. In order to get into the program? No, it's not in order to get into the program. If you are on dialysis and want to enroll, <clears throat> you, are, um, you will be able to do that. But obviously, I will have to test you uh, before you start the program, after six months and at the end. Oh, so we can collect, data. yes, so we can collect data. Okay. So I will explain to you what we do during those testing visits. And after the testing visit, I will schedule you with a muscle therapist. And that's when your program will start. So then you will receive and it's for how long? 12 months. Now it is, yes. It was a pilot study at first for dialysis patients. We uh, finished that and we decided to open a new one, a longer one. So now it's 12 months. Yeah. That's a yes. long time. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, The thing is that, you know, they feel so much better <laughs> after the session mm -hmm. that, I mean, this is really um, life changing for them. Yeah. So they actually cannot wait <laughs> to come to their therapy session. And because they don't lose energy, they actually feel uh, more energized after the, the, the session. That's why they keep coming. Uh, and it's been, it's an amazing journey to see them. Yes. Uh, sorry if I missed this from the beginning, but yes. how often were the participants, um, I guess, going to dialysis and then getting the exercise um, intervention and then getting the uh, mental health uh, therapy session? So they were not um, doing mental health therapy sessions. They were only doing uh, muscle therapy sessions. So we were working on muscle strength and muscle endurance, but their mental state, their mental health was assessed at, um, during the testing visit. So at uh, baseline, in the dialysis study, um, in this study at six after six months, and then at the end of the study, at 12 months. So um, they are coming in on days when they are not on dialysis. So for who, if, for example, a patient dialyzes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they come for therapy sessions Tuesday, Thursday. On their free day. <laughs> on their free day. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yes. I am one of the patients. Yes. Yes. And Callie is now a transplant nurse with New Axis. When I started, I was on the walker. My hemoglobin was low. I had to be transplanted. My global filtration rate was at 15. My uh, creatinine level was above 6. When I finished the program, my global filtration rate was at 23. My creatinine was down to 3.2. <laughs> if, if you're a dialysis patient or a bone transplant patient, GH Fit Lab is for you. Just the work, the endurance, the strength, and the caring. And, and, and I'm not saying, it's not a paid endorsement, uh, but just the follow-up calls, the text messages, how are you doing, how are you feeling, are you too tough on your rest day, I would recommend. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs>
Yes. Um, so when you start the program, the 12 month program, if you're doing the dialysis, and if you're on dialysis and you start the 12 month program, so now like she was saying, she's like on call for a kidney at any moment. So yes. then the program would stop and then she would continue after the surgery. It Correct. Would be yes. A different, a different thing because is it different from the dialysis uh, program to the post op program? Mm hmm. No, so the, um, the program is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So the, the method that we use is exactly the same. Um, there is usually a stop, mm -hmm. can be three weeks, four weeks, depending on, you know, the conditions after the transplant. But then the patient comes back to the program. We reassess uh, the patient and we restart uh, yes, we restart with a new program. So um, we go back maybe to lower weights. Mm -hmm. Maybe now we need to modify to make some changes, but the, the, the core of the muscle therapy is the same. We reassess, but the patient is still enrolled in the study. I can, I can still finish the program. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I wanted to know uh, how you are assessing uh, their level of depression or their sense of being well-being. How are you assessing that? Yes, so we assess that through questionnaires. So they are obviously scientific validated questionnaires. Um, so it's a self-reported um, outcome like they, they they have to answer the same questions when they start the program after six or three months depending on the study and at the end so we we administer uh, questionnaires so if you find them in some degree of de real really good depression uh, do you have some sort of way that you uh, 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 approach that I mean, like, by sending them to see someone to help them with their depression, is that, could, uh, is that possibly part of your program? So the intervention on the depression is not part of the program, but obviously we have to suggest them to talk to someone who can help them treat their, their depression. Um, we, we know from the data we collected that their mental health um, is usually much better once they start the program. Um, but obviously, if there is a severe case of depression, we, we have to look into it. I have to ask if they are seen by someone. If they are not, I have to uh, refer them to someone. Yeah. So you do give references. Yes. And, yes, and we so can do that. Yours would go with the, the necessary doctor. Yes. Well, that's not going to be part of the well, program yeah. anymore because this is a research study that evaluates the effect of this specific muscle therapy. Mm -hmm. So we don't evaluate the effect of um, any mental help that they, they can get outside of the muscle therapy, but obviously they can get the help they need. Yes. This, it's a research study, so you won't have to pay for anything if you want to enroll, even for the parking. Even the parking is <laughs> validated, so no. Um, and is on dialysis or no. not. So, so right now we are um, um, enrolling patients that are currently on dialysis. So n the kidney study, we did a kidney study, so a post-transplant kidney study, but that's um, over. Okay. Uh, now we are focusing, yeah, now we are focusing on uh, patients that are on, on dialysis, yes. Only Yes. Only UIC has this program. This muscle therapy is available only at UIC in all the United States. So how would you go about if you had a transplant already and you would like to do muscle therapy? Right. 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> you would have to pay for it. So the GH Fit Lab is a private um, uh, facility. No. That's why we wanted to, with the collaboration of Dr. Benedetti, we really wanted to bring this uh, to UIC to be able to offer it to as many patients as possible. Sorry, it didn't happen this way. <laughs> so is, is this like physical therapy or is it a different program from physical therapy? No, this is not, this cannot be defined as a physical therapy because it's a therapy uh, that it's, a little bit different. Is in between, as you could see, patients on the machine is is in between, like a physical therapy and maybe um, uh, yeah, a real muscle therapy. Like I I don't want to say fitness because that's another thing. Again, it's uh, it's it's completely different. It's something different than physical therapy. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for your questions. Please mm -hmm. uh, help me in thanking Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you.